This is another video in my series of converting color images to a vector file for laser engraving. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and import um, a file. We actually received this logo in a EPS file format, which is nice. I always sit there and tend to import it as curves. Uh, just because that way you don't have to worry about having the same font on your system as was created before. So I will hit that, then you get this little icon with your cursor, click on it. Notice it's kind of tiny right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to resize it up so it's a fairly nice large image. We still need to do a little cleanup on it. I'll show you how this would go normally. First of all, you would go up to bitmaps and convert this image to a bitmap. Hit OK. It's now a flat file. It's no longer vector based. You might be wondering why I am not just modifying this image um, so that it can etch in vectors. Well, I will show you why. If you zoom in, you can see all these little lines in here. This means that each one of those lines is a separate color, so to speak. So it's that's how they get the gradient in there. It's, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get rid of all of those. And the reason being is if I sit there and convert this image to a black and white bitmap, I'll show you what happens here. First, the thing you got to do when you've done something like that is go into object and combine it with a background. So it's just a flat image. Otherwise, it's layers and it's a little bit harder to work with. But anyway, if once I've done that, if I go in and I convert to black and white, select line art style you'll see that the sun completely disappears and then part of the boat is actually filled in here. Well, I don't like how that looks, so I'm going to try bumping this up a little bit. And the more I bump this up, notice I can get the sun to appear. However, this section of the boat starts to um, black out on me. So I've decided I'm going to get completely get rid of all of those lines in that boat, inside that boat. There's a lot of ways you can do it. One way you can sit there and go over here and take the paint tool and give yourself a large size brush like 30 pixels or something like that and choose a white color and you can kind of scribble them out. Now that's one way to do it. In this case, there's a slightly easier way, so I'm going to hit undo, control Z. And I'm going to go up here to the rectangle mask tool and click left click and hold it down. I'm going to choose the magic wand mask. What this allows me to do is go in and click on those different gradient colors, except here I goofed and my background color is red, not white. So I'm going to undo that, click on this little swap color icon here. That makes my background white and then I can go here and delete. So I can go in and I can select all these different colored blue lines and just click and delete them. That's a little bit tedious, but it's not too bad. I paused the recording for just a few seconds until I got closer to the end and finishing this up. You didn't need to sit there and watch me clicking and then hitting the delete key. So anyway, that's all done now. I'm going to switch back to my rectangle mask and just click somewhere to get rid of the highlighted area. I like how this looks now. So I'm going to zoom back out and I'm going to hit image, convert to black and white again. Again, select line art. Click in this pane and you can zoom out with your scroll wheel. 
Now again, my sun is missing, so I'm just going to drag the slider up a little bit until all the detail that I want is showing. So now I've got the sun. I can zoom in here and make sure that my stars are complete once you've zoomed in. Everything else looks really good as well. So at this hit point, I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to finish editing. Again, you hit Save Changes to Bitmap and Untitled 1, which is the file that I had opened originally in Corel Draw. Keeping in mind this is Photo Paint. Close Photo Paint. And now I have my nice black and white vector image. So at this point, I can now sit there and right click on it, hit Outline Trace. Say I want a detailed logo. Of course, it's going to want me to reduce the bitmap, which is fine, so let it do that. And it's processing, as you can see the little green line going across here. And you can see what your finished bitmap is going to look like. If you don't like any of the detail, you can adjust the detail slider, but in this case, I think it looks really, really good. At this point, once you're happy with the vector base result, hit OK. Then you'll notice that you have the vector image over the bitmap image. I'm going to pull it off to the side. This is the bitmap image here. I'm just going to set it to a different color so I know that that one's the bitmap. And the size of the lay of the blank document in Corel Draw is actually 48 inches by 36 inches. So that means that these images are extremely large. We're just going to scale them down just a bit. Same with our vector image. Scale it down and just put it in the center of the laser area. One thing I tend to like to do is set everything to the color black. And you do that by left clicking the color. And then to make sure that it's going to actually etch our lines in the middle, we right click on the white color. In some cases, I'm not sure why, but Corel Draw sometimes likes to overlap um, these different elements of your design. Um, so what we're going to do just to double check it is we're going to ungroup everything. And we're just going to click on a couple of the elements, hit delete, make sure that there's not duplicate elements. And this one looks like it came in just fine. So we are going to undo a few times until we get back to our black and white image. At this point, you are good to go ahead and cut this out on your laser. Now for uh, just a simple test and to show you how this all works, I'm going to send this design to the laser via RD Works. As you can see, all the outlines are there. If you click it, you can see which color is the layer color because I right clicked on black. Actually, that's the color that it imported on, but if you right clicked on black, that would be a different color. That's how you change layer colors in RD Works. In this case, we're going to double click here on the uh, layer and we're going to set this to scan. For now I'm just going to leave that, set it at about 40 percent for the power settings and I'm going to do an interval of 0.09 and make that 0.08. It'd be a little bit tighter image that way. And then hit OK. Make sure that output here is set to yes and then hit download. It'll give a default name, hit OK. And it sends the file to the laser.
when we get to the laser itself, you can preview the file by hitting File, making sure you select Default, and then hit Enter. And that is exactly how it will look when it's output to whatever material you are etching it on. 